In this video we're going to look at real life examples of proportions. So example one is distance traveled and then example two is uh, football, example three map reading, example four looking at model trains and their scales here, example five nutrition and example six poll results. Okay. So let's go to example one and um, we look at distance traveled. If an airplane flies 1,280 miles in four hours, how far will it fly in seven hours? Okay. So what we need to understand is is simply this: that if if a car, let let's imagine you had a car. I'm just 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 really, you just watch this, or you can write down real quick. But if a car went um, 100 miles in um, two hours, right? What's the, what's the speed? You know, well, it's 50 miles per hour, isn't it? Because it went 100 miles in two hours. So, what would you expect? Um, what would you expect would happen if the car drove for four hours? You know, if the car drove for four hours, how at the same speed? You know, what, what how far would it go? Well, it went 100 miles in two hours. So, at the same speed in four hours, you'd probably say it would go 200 miles, right? And so what we can do is set the, set up this proportion where we've got miles over hours is equal to miles over hours. And you'll see that those fractions are the same, aren't they? Because what's 100 over 2? 100 over 2 is 50, isn't it? That's actually 50 miles per hour because you've got miles divided by hours, right? And this fraction, of course, is 200 over 4. That is 50. And again, it's miles per hour, right? Because it's uh, miles divided by hours. But in any case, the point, uh, you know, you can do that. If if a vehicle or is traveling at the same speed, you can set up these proportions with miles over hours, for example. And of course, cross multiplying will also work, because if you go 100 times 4, that will be equal to 2 times 100, see? Or 2 times 200, right? What's 100 times 4? 400? What's 2 times 200? 400, right? See how cross multiplying works? And so my point is if, if we had an uh, unknown in there, like if we were doing this 100 over 2 equals how many miles will it go in 4 hours, I wonder? 100 miles 2 hours equals how many over uh, in 4 hours? Well, if you cross multiplied, you would get 100 times 4 equals 2 times x or 400 equals 2x and then you would undo multiplying by 2, you divide by 2 on both sides and 400 over 2 is 200 and that would be equal to x and that is true it would do 200 miles in 4 hours so that's just one to completely explain what's going on here right? so my point is you can set up a proportion with miles over hours equals miles over hours. We know some of these numbers, there's one number we don't know. Let's start with what we do know. We know we can go 1 to 80 miles over 4 hours, in 4 hours, right? And that equals some unknown number of miles over 7 hours, okay? So we set up this proportion, and this is unknown, so it's like you put a question mark here. But usually we put a letter, and the letter represents the unknown number. So, and often I use letter X. You can use whatever letter you like, it doesn't matter. But it's just, it's to show that this is, X is a, is a number that we don't know we have to find. Okay. So we go ahead and cross multiply, and we get uh, 1 to 80 times 7 should equal uh, 4 times x. Okay. And now I'm going to do something uh, that you don't have to do, but I, I kind of like to do it. Instead of multiplying the 7 through and then dividing by 4, I'm going to divide by 4 right away. What's this? To get x by itself, you see x is being multiplied by 4, I need to divide by 4. right? So I'm going to divide this side by 4 as well. Okay. The 4's will cross cancel, and I'll get 1 times x over 1, or just x. And on this side, 
4 into 4 goes once, see that? 4 into uh, 12 goes 3 times. 4 into 8 goes twice. And 4 into 0 goes 0 times. So I have 320 times 7 over 1. So I just go 320 times it by 7. And then that's my answer when I get it, right? 7 times 0 is 0, 7 times 2 is 14, and carry the 1, 7 times 3 is 21, and 1 is 22. So 2, 2, 4, 0 is the answer. Now, what does that represent? An airplane flies 1,280 miles in 4 hours. How far will it fly in 7 hours? So this should be kilograms, or meters, or feet, or what? miles right miles now does that answer the question uh, does that make sense make common sense is that a common sense answer it's got to fly more than that in the seven hours right and uh, I mean twice that would be about 24 2500 or something and so it's a little bit less well it didn't fly for twice as long twice as long would have been eight hours so I mean it looks right doesn't it Okay, so um, example two: in the first six games of a season, a football NFL team uh, scores a total of 138 points. At this rate, how many points will the team score in the 17-game season? Okay, so what we could do is something like, and you don't have to do it the exact same way. As long as you get the right answer, I don't care what you do. But number of points <laughs> over number of games equals number of points over number of games. If you want to do it that way you can, right? Of course you could do number of games over number of points equals number of games over number of points. It wouldn't matter. So I mean your games could be, but you have to have it the same in both fractions basically. Points, games, points, games, or games, points, games, points. Same thing. Anyway, so let's see. We've got 138 points in how many games? Six, right? And that is supposed to equal how many points in how many games? Well, 17 games down here, 17 games, right? And uh, how many points will the team score in 17 games? So this is the unknown number of points. We don't know, okay? Does that make sense? And now we cross cancel. Or cross multiply, rather cross multiply, and we get. Uh, I guess you could write six times x. This times this equals this times this. One, three, eight times seventeen. Okay. And now instead of multiplying these out, and then dividing by six, I'm going to divide by six now. Okay. And the six cross cancels, and I get one times x over one, which is x equals. And now I can simplify this this guy here, okay? And I'm gonna try, I know this is an even number and so is this, I'm gonna put two in there first. Two into six goes three times. Two into 13 goes uh, six times remainder of one. And two into 18 goes nine times. And look, six, nine, and I've got three down here. That might help. So what about this? Three into three goes once. Three into six goes twice. And 3 into 9 goes 3 times. So what I have is uh, 23, I'll write it again, 23 times 17 over 1. So if I just go 17 times 23, then it'll work out, right? So 7 3 is 21, carry the 2. 7 2 is 14, and 2 is 16. Put down a placeholder 0. 1 times 3 is 3, 1 times 2 is 2, add 1, 9, 3, okay? So what does that represent though? The question said, how many points will the team score in the 17 game season? So X represented, and we put up here, see the points was on the top, right? In our setup. So X represented the points in 17 games. Okay, so 391 points 
is the answer, right? Okay. Example 3, map reading. A map is drawn so that every 3.5 inches corresponds to an actual distance of 200 miles. If the actual distance between two cities is 500 miles, how far apart are they on the map? So we have two types of numbers, inches and miles, map distance and real distance, or whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to call it inches and miles. And I can set up a proportion or a fraction equal to a fraction like this. See that? So I can go 3.5 inches inches over uh, corresponds to 200 miles. So this goes with this. 3.5 goes with the 200. And if the actual distance between two cities is 500 miles that's miles on the bottom how far apart are they on the map? What is the inches? What, um, what will the inches be on the map for 500 mile distance? Right. So you go x inches, don't you? So inches, miles, inches, miles. So if 3.5 inches corresponds to 200 miles, what amount of inches will correspond to 500 miles? Okay. So this is our proportion. It's a fraction equal to a fraction. And if we have a proportion, we can cross multiply and solve it. So I'll go uh, 200 times x equals 3.5 times 500, right? And once again, instead of multiplying these and then divide by 200, I'm going to go ahead and divide by 200 right away to get x by itself. If I do that, these guys will cross cancel. I'll get 1 times x over 1, or x equals, and then I just need to figure this out. And because I have multiplication on the top, I can cross cancel. And uh, 200 divided by 100 is just 2, isn't it? 500 divided by 100 is just 5. So already I've got that far. See that? So it's 3.5 times 5 all over 2. I guess we could do that. 3.5 times 5. 5 5 is 25, carry the 2. 5 3 is 15, and that's 17. One decimal place, so 17.5. And so we have 17.5 on the top, and then it's divided by 2, right? So 2 into 17.5. 2 into 17 goes 8 times. Remainder 1 decimal point goes up here, doesn't it? 2 into 15. 7 times. Remainder of 1. What will I do? I need to add on a 0 here. Right. So 2 into 15 goes 7 times. Remainder of 1. And now 2 into 10. 5 times. So 8.75. What does that represent? Feet? Kilometers? Pounds? X was up here, right? How far apart are the cities on the map? 8.75 inches. Now, the next thing you got to look at is, is that a common sense answer? Is that definitely wrong? Can you say that it's definitely wrong, for example? I mean, okay, 200 miles, right? Um, 3.5 inches. 500 miles, that's even further, 8.75 inches, even further on the map. That makes sense, doesn't it? It has to be a lot more, or quite a bit more than 3.5 if it's going to be 500 miles, which is quite a bit more than 200, right? Okay. Example 4, model trains. <coughs> How long is an actual boxcar that has an, H a, a, an, a, an HO scale model 8 inches long? Okay, in other words, uh, a part of a train called a boxcar, um, well, when, when you've got your model train, like, uh, you know, your model choo-choo train, choo-choo-choo, right? The scale model is eight inches long. Now, how big would that be in real life is the question. Now, it's an HO scale model. 
and the ratio for HO scale model trains is 1 to 87. In other words, one inch in real life corresponds to 80, or sorry, one inch in a scale corresponds to 87 inches in real life. Or you could even say one foot of a scale corresponds to 87 feet in real life. Okay? So, um, you could say you could you could set up a proportion I guess well you know what you could do is just well we'll talk about it. Let, let's just set up a, what, what you would do in a proportion situation you could say that um, the uh, you could say that the model size over real size should equal model size over real size okay so, um, in other words, we have a model size um, of 8 inches, okay, and um, that corresponds to a real size of, we don't know, okay, but we know the scale is 1 to 87, so that means that 1 inch of a model size would correspond to 87 inches of a real size okay and then we cross multiply and we get um, x times 1 equals 8 times 87 right so x equals and of course at this point we're just doing 8 times 87 okay now 8 sevens is 56 carry the 5 8 eighths is 64 and 5 is 69, right? So we get 6, 9, 6 and that is um, measured in inches, right? This is going to be, this is inches because uh, the x, it's all inches basically. Now I guess one thing to say is we didn't actually, we, start, we didn't need to do a proportion at all. We could have just said, look, the scale is 1 to 87. If the small, if the small length, if, if the scale, if the model is 8 inches, right, then I just multiply by 87 and I get the real size. So for these guys, you don't actually have to do a proportion, right? So we end up with 696 inches. Now we have to give our answer in feet as well. Okay? So how many inches are in a foot? There are 12 inches. Okay? So, um, what I need to do to turn inches into feet, you see, is actually divide by 12. So I go 12 into or yeah, I'd like to do it a different way, I guess. I just take my six nine six and I divide it by twelve. Okay. And if I write out like this now I can uh, simplify it a little better. Two into twelve goes six times. Two into six goes um three times. Two in, or two into nine goes four times remainder of one and two into sixteen goes eight times okay so now I have it down to three four eight over six that's a little bit better and now I'm going to divide by two again two into six goes three times two into that goes once remainder one two to fourteen goes seven times two to eight goes four times okay so now it's 174 over three which is a little bit easier to do uh, I guess I could do division 3 into 17 goes 5 times, remainder 2. 3 into 24 goes um, 8 times, right? So when I take my inches and divide it by 12, which is what I just did, 6, 9, 6 over 12, I end up getting 58. So it's, six, nine, it's nine, 696 inches or 58 feet, okay? is the uh, length of the box car that would have a model scale model 8 inches long. So 
If we're answering this, how long is an actual flat car that has an LGB scale model 32 inches long? An LGB is the type of, it's kind of a larger uh, type of model train, okay? And the ratio is 1 to 22.5. In other words, 1 inch in of a scale would equal 22.5 inches of real, okay? If you want, you can set up a proportion where you've got model over real, or vice versa. But the, the model would be, one inch of a model would be the same as 22.5 inches of a reel. And you could say that that is equal to 32 inches of a model over how many of real, right? And then you could uh, cross multiply and you get one times x equals this times this, 22.5 times 32. So you could do that, or you could just say, look, if the model is 32 inches and the scale is 1 to 22.5, that means that the real one is 22.5 times bigger. So you just go, whatever happens, you just go 22.5 times 32. And, and you're going to be doing this at some point, so you're going to do this down here anyway. Anyway, so you're going to multiply these numbers. 2 times 5 is 10, carry the 1. 2 times 2 is 4 and 1 is 5. 2 times 2 is 4, put down the placeholder 0, 3 5 is 15, carry the 1, 3 2 is 6 and 1 is 7, 3 2 is 6, add 0, 0, carry the 1, and 8 and 4 is 12, carry the 1, and that is 7, and we have one decimal place, so 1 in the answer here, see that, 720.0, or 720 is the answer, right? Inches. Now, we also want to give the answer in feet. So if I take the inches and divide it by 12, I will get feet. Okay? So I'm going to do that. Take the 720, divide it by 12, because it's 12 inches in a foot, and that will give me feet in the end. Okay, so I'm going to divide, I'm going to go 2 into 12, go 6 times. 2 into that goes 3 times and 1 over. 2 into 12 goes 6 times. 2 into 0 goes 0 times. I get 360 over 6. And, oh, I think 6 goes into 36. What do you think? Right, so 6 into 6 goes once. 6 into 36 goes 6 times. 6 into 0 goes 0 times. That gives me 60 over 1, or 60. So, 720 inches, or 60 feet. Pretty long, I guess. And uh, let's look at example 5. Nutrition. Although blueberries contain low levels of vitamins C and E, they do contain incredibly high levels of antioxidant phytonutrients. Research has shown that phytonutrients help prevent mutations at the cellular level and help prevent the proliferation of cancer cells, help prevent cancer cells from growing. If it is recommended that 511 cups of blueberries should be consumed annually, how many cups should be consumed each week? Okay. So let's have a look at that. If you're to consume 511 cups of blueberries to get all the enough goodness out of it in a year. How much should you consume in a week? Okay. So um, basically, you could say 52 weeks in one year. Okay. So you could go number of cups over number of weeks as your proportion so 511 cups in 52 weeks right equals how many cups in one week and of course if you cross multiply that is uh, 52 times x equals 511 times 1 or in other words just divide by 52 right and x equals 
and then you go 52 into 511 point zero maybe so 52 doesn't go into 51 but it probably goes in there ah, nine times I think nine twos is 18 carry the one nine fives 45 and one is 46 11 minus 8 is 3 and that carries it up became 0 this becomes 4 that's a 10 10 minus 6 is 4 and 52 into that would go 7 oh, let's think about 5's 5 eights is or 8 5's is 40 right I'm going to go with 8. See what happens. 8 twos is 16. Carry the 1. 8 fives is 40. And 1 is 41. So we get uh, 24. And uh, put down the 0 and keep going. 520 into that goes oh about 4 times or so. Put um, 9.84 rounded to the nearest cup that's approximately 10 cups per week right 10 cups of blueberries per week gives you all the goodness out of them right you can round that to about, about 10 cups right now out of 440 registered voters polled in a city 286 did not support the bank bailouts of 2009 if the city has 180 138,000 registered voters how many of them opposed bailing out the banks? Let's see. So what we could do is set up a proportion. We've got two types of um, numbers here. Voters and uh, people who opposed the bailouts, right? So we could say number opposed each fraction could be number opposed over number of voters total, right? Of course, this is just an approximate estimate based on the poll. I mean, it is not exact, of course. So, number opposed, at first we could say, well, 286 corresponds to the 440 total voters. And what would the other fraction look like? Can you fill out the other fraction? How many opposed over how many voters? It says if the city has 138,000 registered voters, so that would go down here, right? How many of them oppose bailing out the banks? Oppose would be unknown, X, right? So we'd set up the proportion and then cross multiply, and we could get 440 times X equals this times this. 286 times 138,000, right? And again, instead of um, just multiplying this and then dividing through by 440, I'm going to divide by 440 right now and see if I can simplify this a little bit before I go on. Okay, so one thing I can do is divide 10 into here and here. I divide both both of these by 10 when the zeros crosses off, isn't it? So I can do that much anyway. And let's see, I know uh, 2 is definitely going to go into the, these two because they're both evens. So uh, 2 into that goes twice and 2 into 4 goes twice. 2 into this goes once, 2 into that goes 4 times, 2 into that goes 3 times. Um, Two will also go into this one and this one. So two into that goes once. Two into that goes once. Eleven I have here now. Two into thirteen goes uh, six times. Remainder of one. Two into eighteen goes nine times. Two into zero is zero times. Two into this zero is zero times. And this zero is already crossed off. Remember. So we're still multiplying. So I guess we have 143 times this over 11, and uh, we might as well. Um, let's see, 3... Anyway, yeah, I guess we might as well just try and work it out now. 
so 6900 zero, zero times 143 3 times 0 is 0, 3 times 0 is 0, 3 times 9 is 27, carry the 2, 3, 6 is 18, and 2 is 20, down to 0, 4 zeros is 0, 4 zeros is 0, 4 nines is 36, carry the 3, 4 6 is 24, and 3 is 27, 2 placeholders, and multiplied by 1, right? 9, 6, and add. 7, 6, 18, carry the 1, and that's 9. Okay, so that's that, and then we have to divide by, so we get uh, 9, 8, 6, 7, 0, oh, oh, all over 11. So we got to go 11 into that, right? So 11 into 98. Doesn't go nine times, it'll go eight times. Eighty-eight, subtract. We get ten, bring the six down. Eleven into that won't go ten times, it'll go nine times. Nine eleven is ninety-nine, subtract. And we get seven. Bring the seven down. Eleven into seven goes seven times. Seven eleven is seventy-seven. Subtract, and we get zero. And eleven into zero goes zero times. Eleven to zero goes zero times, right? So eight nine seven zero zero, which represents what? Represents the number of people opposed to bailing out the banks out of one hundred and thirty-eight thousand people. All right. So this is people opposed.